Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. Today guys we're going to be diving down into the world of Cardano, taking a look at the price action of ADA. Um, with a new year starting, are we likely to see new all-time highs? I believe so, but let me know in the comments down below. Do you think ADA is going to reach a new all-time high? And if so, how high do you think it's likely to go? And as we get into this, if you find it useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then do go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so you will be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right, with all that said, done and out of the way, let's jump on down into the charts and take a look at what's going on here with Cardano. Okay, guys, so uh, we're going to start things off like we did with Bitcoin the other day. And we're going to start with the, the smaller time frames and work our way up to the bigger picture, the macro picture, which in my opinion is the more important one. Um, but since I see a lot of comments, people kind of me not actually watching uh, the here and the now and thinking that the, the macro picture is something that's going to happen, you know, quickly and instantly. It's not. That's a longer term play. I'm going to go through the shorter time frame to start with, show you what's likely to happen sooner, um, and then obviously go through what I think is likely to happen slightly longer term. Um, so here on the hourly chart, we have Cardano. Uh, last time we looked at this, we had our downward trend um, just forming here. We obviously had that completion of our C wave, a one-to-one -one ratio with our A wave. So again, very standard stuff, didn't go impulsive down. Uh, well, this actually led to a very small A, B, C to the upside here, followed by more to the downside. If I actually leave that on there one sec, let me just... Uh, yeah, I'll draw on that ABC right there. Okay, then this led to um, a much bigger play. Now, here you can see that there is an ABC in this right here. Um, and then, of course, there's an ABC up, ABC down, ABC, etc. Right. Um, but I actually see this slightly differently. I see this as a bit slightly bigger play. I see this as one wave here, this being your two waves, and this being a C wave, a really, really short C wave. Okay, and um, this is really important to kind of just note for a second to go if I actually take hold of this A wave move and we move this over to our B wave high, um, this actually shows us moving down to the 702, getting the reversal and then bouncing right back up again. And we didn't actually come down to the one to one ratio. So, unlike what we had up here with the A wave equaling the C wave, taking us down to 137. Um, here we actually had a slightly shorter C wave, didn't come down to the full expected $1.24, um, instead we fell short at uh, $1.28 and now we've had the reversal and we started to get some traction to the upside. Okay, now right now what's really important to note is we kind of have this double top forming, this is usually quite a bearish scenario, okay, a double top like this you see the reversal, but I also see this slightly differently, um, and again this pattern might actually catch a few people out, so what I'm seeing here is, there is of course the ABC move we have this here the abc up okay and if we measure that distance from our a wave here and we throw that on top of our b wave low we can get an idea as to where that was likely to go here you can see that that c wave overextended the one to one and actually just fell short of the 1.382 this would have triggered if it went higher than that $1.38 area it would have triggered an impulsive move up instead you saw the reversal the reversal came in because it actually reached the same height as what we had previously just up here with this b wave high and therefore causing a double uh, a double top right basically a bearish signal and reversal okay so that's your abc this then actually looks to track an abc to the downside okay and you kind of already have this here um, and now we're starting to see a bit of reversal now there's possible it is still possible that we actually track a little bit further to the downside so i'm going to grab hold of uh, this wave just here if i get that there on the nose there we go and we'll pull that up and um, so here we can see that we have uh, we haven't pulled all the way down to the six one here but we've got close so it's possible that we do have a bit of a pullback here and um, a little bit more than, than maybe we were expected and again inside here we kind of see there's an a this could potentially be our b wave and we could potentially be looking at pulling back down a little bit lower before we get that next push to the upside okay um again i see this as something slightly different if i actually just measure that uh that a wave there for a sec and i'll show you my expectations on this b wave so we'll have the high for the b uh the c wave should come down to about 133 okay on that next like kind of micro trend down now this abc up abc down i think it's actually uh, one big a wave up a big b wave down and then that will lead into a C wave high. Okay, let me just clear this up a little bit. I'm going to remove some of this. And we'll measure this distance here, right? So we'll take it from the high area um, just up here. And we'll pull this down. We'll throw that onto our expected C wave low. And again, this then shows us a C wave high. 
uh, just up here at about 143. Okay, so I think that there's a little bit of downside to come that will quickly reverse out and then start to turn bullish as we continue to run up. And then we'll come on to this high area here of 143 and the one to one ratio. Okay, that's the most probable area. Obviously, as you can see, it doesn't always run that way. Sometimes you fall short, sometimes you go slightly longer. The stochastic RSI is definitely supporting a good move to the upside. Um, so my expectation is to at least kind of come up to that 143 zone. Of course, if we do go past that 1.382, that's $1.46.9, then we should actually be going impulsive, turning this from a one, two, uh, an ABC into a 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, and um, which will take us, you know, significantly higher. But obviously, we'll have to analyze that as time progresses. And um, but for Cardano right now, I think there's a little bit of downside to come, and that will quickly reverse out, and then we'll start to really get some traction to the upside. Okay, completing these patterns out. Um, and of course, you know, that double top would normally be a bearish sig uh, signal. We do actually tend to see, you know, a big pullback. But I think actually this is a part of a B wave move, and um, before we actually go up higher, and the stochastic RSI supports that. So if we do pull this back down into this oversold area, it's going to be primed and ready to kind of get some decent traction to the upside there okay so that's kind of why I envision is going to happen over the next couple of days um, so we should start to see some interesting things occur here with uh, with Cardano. Um, we are at least looking at moving up to the previous A wave high. Um, so again, that's one dollar thirty eight um, from our current position. Um, so that's kind of where you would expect it to. Even if you do end up with a C wave that's shorter, uh, you know, one thirty eight, one thirty nine, something like that, um, before you potentially see any downside. Or because uh, if we do actually get the one to one ratio, one forty three. If we overextend, one forty six point nine. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm seeing there. So actually, take a, a look at the daily chart again we're tracking this triangular wedge on the daily and um, again falling back down now and um, what's interesting about this is one of the things that I'm, I'm trying to really focus in on is to make sure that this is not a Elliott wave triangle okay because um, for those who are familiar with Elliott wave triangle and um, the leading um, trend coming into the triangle is the one that is going to determine the exit of the triangle and um, so as we come in and this is our a wave high here this being a b wave a c wave a d wave an e wave this would effectively mean that we actually pull all the way down and we break down from this triangle okay pulling right back so we don't want an Elliott wave triangle to form here and um, but it is important that we led in to, and it's important to know that we led in with an upward direction and we started to pull back with quite a big abc so um, right now this could play out well for us in terms of price appreciation um, but it could also turn out to be a bearish signal if it turns into an Elliott wave triangle um, and again looking for those wave counts and seeing how that plays out but for now I'm um, just monitoring that situation on the daily um, it's slightly concerning but I think we still have more room to grow to the upside and um, before that actually turns into anything concerning so we don't want to just jump out when we're at the bottom uh, of a price chart on Cardano for example it doesn't make a lot of sense and um, as we zoom on in here you know especially Specifically when you, know, you talk about, you know, I'm selling Cardano, whatever people are referring to. Um, it's important to know where we are in the cycle uh, or where we are in the chart patterns before you might actually, you know, start to exit if you want to. Um, I'm not exiting Cardano. Um, I think this has got so much more potential to it yet. Um, I think exiting is, is very, very foolish. Now, I've exited a few other projects that I think have had their time. They've run really well, um, you know, such as Solana, for example. You know, $185, I was done with that. That was my expectation for Solana. It's done better. That's great. But I'm not greedy and I don't like to just let things ride um, for the sake of greed. Greed can get the better of you. Uh, in the case of Cardano, I find it incredibly undervalued right now. Um, and I think that a lot of the money is going to start cycling into Cardano in 2022. So um, for me, this right now is a really low point. And um, specifically, if we talk about, you know, potentially riding up to these higher areas again, you know, 185, 118, 190, um, just because, you know, that's the, where the triangle kind of is, is forming, um, you know, selling down here or specifically, Specifically, you know, I saw people kind of saying that they were selling Cardano. I think it was like around around here, like Christmas Eve or something, you know, when it was like 138. Um, you know, yes, we are slightly lower than that at that point. If you're jumping back in, great. But um, I think this is a big A wave, B wave. We're looking for that next big wave to the upside here to complete this pattern uh, on our daily. Again, this is a slightly longer play, but here's your A wave, here's your B wave. And then we'll look to track that for the C wave higher. Uh, again, I can measure that distance and we'll get the, the, the most probable area to focus in on. 
if we just grab hold of this and move it to here um here we can see that that c wave should move to 169.5 uh, over the next few weeks or so that's kind of the the expectation of our daily chart okay could go a little bit higher going higher than 185 turns it impulsive uh, on the daily meaning it's got bigger traction and much further to go okay so there's some good progress to be had here on our daily chart but we are aware that the triangle could be deemed bearish if it starts to form into an elliott wave triangle um which so far it isn't but you know we have to be mindful that it is a possibility um specifically if um we treat this as the a wave if actually we start to form the triangle out a slightly later uh, in the year what we could actually be looking at here is um the a wave coming down here with a b c d and e and then that leads us out into higher highs okay um and it, and it usually is led by an impulsive break to the upside and um, so this triangle is a bit too soon to say but if we start to form some decent kind of patterns inside this triangle it could lead to some pretty interesting things for um cardano and i do think it's going to lead to some new all-time highs for ada if we do actually play this out really well um so let's actually jump on over into our weekly chart again you can see the the, the new trend forming here um, so basically we think we actually had a really shallow fifth wave um up here on our chart then we had this abc corrective pullback and now we are starting to form this new trend this new a wave b and then a c again this could potentially take us to some interesting levels if this turns impulsive which i would anticipate it probably would um considering the, what's going on with the ecosystem this could lead us to some really really good numbers now obviously this is just speculation at this point because that trend has not actually been kind of set just yet we can kind of see there's a birth of a new trend here and um, but we don't know you know to what extent that's going to be yet um obviously the trend based fib does show us with those areas that we were tracking previously i think a lot of these numbers are still in play in terms of like the four dollars 87 the seven dollars 26 and um, the 9 65 11 uh, 13 those are numbers that are still in play but this particular trend that's forming um, it does lead us to speculate you know potentially 15 20 25 dollars depending on how impulsive this thing turns and what we mean by that is we just have to look back at what happened previously with what our original abc turning impulsive we had 13 000 percent in gains in just one year from march 2020 through to um well actually it's a little bit over that it's 427 days but um may 2021 right um so 427 days nearly 14,000 percent in gains a really really big impulsive move was made if this is what starts to form here with cardano it's going to start to mirror some of these um, other protocols that are doing some really interesting things that could actually spec we could actually speculate it could reach these high numbers now nothing is set in stone for that um and i do think we you know they want to be kind of cautious with these really high numbers i don't think we want to kind of rely on them too much um, but I do think that if this does turn impulsive, it's really possible that these numbers do come in. Um, but again, it does re rely on on several things kind of being key key kind of uh, elements to this, right? One obviously is a, a serious level of adoption um, to drive uh, demand for ADA, and that will come in many different forms, whether that's digital IDs for Ethiopia or um, Boost Mobile or whether that, that's one element of it. Um, the other element is, of course, all the uh, DApps that are looking to migrate from a ethereum to cardano and um, that's going to add demand for ada then of course you're going to have um DeFi protocols that may be launching on cardano again there's going to be locked up ada there there's going to be dexes that will lock up ada and uh, you know liquidity pools and things like that but then of course there's going to be transactional things that are going to have an increase for for ada uh, with those dApps as well and all of that increase for demand will basically put a strain on the supply and uh, basically you know when it comes to price discovery there's only two things that really matter it is the supply and it is the demand um supply and demand will always outwin uh, a lot of people focus in on market cap but market cap only measures price it doesn't measure the value of a protocol and it doesn't measure anything useful in terms of price discovery it's a very very basic calculation that is the last sold price of ada multiplied by the circulating supply and i saw a lot of kind of fud out there in the very 
very early days of 2021 where you know there's lots of people saying that how is cardano worth x amount of billions of dollars in market cap well it's not because market cap isn't a representation of value it's a representation of price and um, which is totally different and price is driven from supply and demand if there's a not big enough demand for ada and there's a squeeze on the supply whether that is through staking through liquidity pools um you know just general need for transactions, then I think you're going to start to see a very significant rise in the price of ADA overall. This is generally how every single cryptocurrency has price discovery. It's FOMO and the demand that comes from FOMO. Once you actually start to see some demand keep kicking in and some pretty decent green candles get printed on Cardano, that FOMO effect is also going to kick in, which is going to send this into overdrive. And that's really how I kind of think we are likely to head up to these numbers. But once this trend is fully concreted in, um, we start to actually have a good a wave a b wave and then we start to see how that c wave goes it'll give us a good flavor as to where things are likely to go um in this bull run and in 2022 for cardano now i do want to briefly just touch on this piece um again this is how vcs don't understand cardano um and how cardano has a community all that kind of goes there's just a couple of quotes i think that are um worth kind of just pointing out from from charles hoskinson here um you know this is why the you know, vcs don't understand that cardano has a community they think it's just charles hoskinson behind a microphone i find that quite an interesting statement and you know he also does say here that you know, that uh, they as in the developers of other protocols um should also commit to putting at least one of their developers and um, to contribute into the cardano protocol um and you know it basically also goes on a little bit about how the quality of their comments and and how they're being called out as um you know not being you know accurate or whatever and if these other people who are calling out cardano are such experts then they should actually tell cardano and specifically you know charles hoskinson which comments are wrong i find that quite an interesting thing because we see this quite a lot we get called out for lots of different things but they can't actually concrete that with facts it's just noise and fud in the space it's really important we understand that but you know if they're failing dramatically on a roadmap they want to also do point it out on exactly where that is now i think as expectations are different to what is necessarily being kind of communicated if people have different expectations than what is actually physically possible then that's that's something we need to also consider but um i think maybe a part of it is also communication communication based issues can cause people to not necessarily have the right expectations for the right kind of things and um, so i think there's a little bit of um to and fro here that i kind of find interesting and um it is also some a point here that uh, chris talks about quite a lot on the channel and that is that uh, not all projects are going to survive the next five to ten years right and um you know they've seen uh, i think it was like 10.5 billion dollars um worth of of basically yeah 10.5 billion dollars worth of um DeFi, you know that's just been wiped out because of poor development right and i think you know the approach that Cardano has taken is to kind of safeguard people as best as possible. Yes, that takes a little bit more time, um, but those projects and those protocols that have uh, really poorly written code or haven't, you know, fixed issues fast enough or um, haven't really got um, fully decentralized, etc. Uh, maybe they are not doing as well as they need to. Unfortunately, you know, this space is going to swallow up a lot of projects in the next five to ten years. There's going to be only be a handful of actual winners in this space, right? Right now, there's over sixteen thousand cryptocurrencies. Uh, a large portion of those are scam coins, honeypots, etc. You have to kind of watch out for. Um, but that's a vast amount of cryptocurrencies. Not all projects are going to survive. Um, I will be surprised if um, you know we actually see twenty percent of that survive long term okay i think it's important that we kind of understand that you know the crypto uh, bear markets that everyone keeps calling out for um you know they they are brutal they are absolutely brutal on protocols right because they survive on having their treasury funds right to be able to kind of you know push things further forward um and when you know the price drops down by 90 percent you know, they are unable to hire developers they're unable to make the progress that they want to and maybe they have to actually you know leave the crypto space altogether maybe the protocols just completely die off right um it is important that we understand that you know in the next five to ten years there's going to be some very clear winners and there's going to be some very clear losers and um charles hoskinson points that out here as well i think it's very important that we don't lose track of of what happens in a bear market and uh, why calling it a bear market or every little dip a bear market is incredibly 
um, insensitive, but also, you know, very, very misleading and very, very um, confusing to anyone who's been around in this space a long time because it just simply doesn't work that way. This isn't a, a bear market that lasts a couple of months. They don't exist in the crypto space. You're talking a good 18 to 24 month period of nothing but decline. Okay, we think you've seen, you know, decline so far, you know, a couple of month period of where you have an ABC correction. And um, that is absolutely nothing in comparison to what will happen um, when the bear market comes and uh, you won't be won't be nice. Okay, so um, I think it's important that we understand that, yeah, uh, Cardano has some interesting stuff going on in the short term medium terms looking interesting it can uh, be bearish it can also be very positive but when you actually take a look at the macro view um, on that weekly chart it looks actually very very good and i do expect us to get the break to the upside that's very much needed and set new all-time highs guys i'm going to leave the video there hopefully you have found this useful and informative if you have hit that like button i really do appreciate that if you happen to be new to the channel then do go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you will be kept up to date with absolutely everything that we do here at cheeky crypto with us said, done and out of the way. I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.